Okay, hey guys, today's video is going to be short and sweet, but I wanted to walk you through a resource that is very useful for medical students across the board applying for the NRMP match, but particularly for IMGs, uh, that, and that document is the NRMP Program Director Survey. So this is a survey that's released every two years, I believe, by the NRMP, and it, it shares statistical data related to the year's residency match outcomes. So for me, this has been my number one source of reliable information related to what programs look for in their applicants, what scores are needed for certain specialties, and how being an IMG impacts one's chances on matching into certain specialties. So I get a lot of emails from people asking me, you know, like what's the most important, like what's the most important thing contributing to my residency application? What's the best score? or what scores do I need to apply to this specialty? And I don't know the answers to those questions personally because I'm not a program director, but you can get a lot of valuable information from this document here. So you can just search NRMP Director Survey 2018 in whatever search engine you use, and it'll be this one that comes up here. So we're just gonna open that up now. And so this is what it looks like. So. I'm just gonna scroll through just the first couple of pages with you so you can see what I'm talking about. So it's gonna go over a bunch of statistics for the respondents, uh, the programs that responded for all specialties across the board here, uh, combined into one, and then it breaks it down for each different specialty. So if you're interested in interventional radiology, then you can go specifically there and see what the respondents said in those programs and what they value the most in their applicants. So let's just scroll down here you can see that they send out the survey, the NRMP sends out the survey to 4,000 something programs and the people that responded, uh, there's about 1,300 programs that responded. So the information doesn't apply to all the programs in America, only the ones that responded to the survey, so about 1,300. So let's look at all specialties combined. So this is the 1,300 that we were talking about. So you can see that it breaks it down here in this list in descending order of most important to least important across all specialties of the programs, or the, the factors that were cited by these programs to be the most important when it comes to selecting an applicant to send an in invitation to for residency. So you can see that step one is up here right at the top, which is no surprise, as long with, along with letters of recommendation, your MSPE, and your step two CK. And there are other things as well, obviously, but you can just keep scrolling down. And beyond that, then there are some graphs that will come after every section. So you can see uh, how relevant your step one score is uh, and your step two score as far as uh, programs that actually require you to have those scores submitted, which it's the majority of those, right? And then you can find out whether or what the effect is on your chances of getting interviews if you have failed step on the first attempt, right? So here, 58% of the respondents said that they would seldom consider someone uh, after they have failed the step one exam. However, some do, right? And some never consider. So let's just scroll beyond there. Now we have another graph that'll tell you uh, it has kind of a cutoff, a numeric cutoff of the scores below which programs generally don't grant interviews, which is here, and then scores above which programs almost always grant interviews. So if you're applying for an interventional radiology or something and you're sitting in the 240 zone, uh, in general, you don't have to worry about them ruling you out based off of your step one score, right? course are other things that can come in to uh, can impact that but as far as your step, step one score goes you're probably going to be okay but you can see that specifically when you scroll down to the interventional radiology section because that they may have a bit of a higher cutoff there than the average program does so beyond that there's also information on uh, DO students because they take the COMLEX exams so that's not relevant to us as international students and you can also see how relevant the step three score, which is not that relevant. Um, at least this is for USMDs here, okay? So we're gonna keep scrolling. This is all stuff that you can see but is not relevant for what I'm talking about in this video. What I do wanna show you uh, is more specific to each specialty. So let's start with anesthesiology. Let's scroll down and see what extra information we can gather. As you can see, 
this first figure is pretty much the same as the one that we already scrolled through at the top. So, you know, the step one score is really important to them. Same with their letters of recommendation and your MSPE if you're applying to anesthesiology. No surprise there. But let's just scroll down a little bit further. Um, seen all this. So here's a, a nice thing. This is useful, right? If you're applying to anesthesiology and you want to know what score you need to aim for for step one or step two, then these are the graphs that are useful to you. And these are things that I get asked about all the time. People will say again, like, I want to apply to anesthesiology. What do I have to score? And I can't tell you that, but this document can. Again, this is, you know, based on a limited number of programs. However, it does give you a good ballpark, as, as much uh, information that you can get, right? So for anesthesiology, you want to be hitting about the 220 mark, ideally in the, you know, 230s, 240s. Then there is some more information when we scroll down here. Let's see, they talk about IMGs specifically. So percentage of programs that typically interview and rank each applicant type. So here you can see if you're a Canadian, if you're a US IMG or a non-US IMG, how that will impact your chances when you're applying to anesthesiology programs. Some programs you'll see these numbers will be much lower and some programs uh, you know, the number of programs or the percent of programs that consider Canadians, for example, uh, is much lower, you know, like 12 to 15 percent. Anesthesiology is not that bad. But this is a good place to see um, how you compare to other applicants who are from U.S. schools um, or DO schools, right? So that's just useful information to have. And all of this other information can be helpful too, but as you can see, it's just a bunch of statistical information that can help you out, um, especially if you're looking for a particular information related to the specialty that you're interested in. So you can go down or go back up, I guess, to the glossary. Let's see if I can go up there. Well, you get the point. You can go up and click on the specialty that you want to apply to and see their specific requirements of the things that uh, they want from their applicants that they're considering giving interviews to uh, when it comes to step one scores or if you're Canadian or a US IMG or you're an IMG from overseas, you know, it's just a good uh, kind of barometer of where you are and what your goal should be moving forward as far as residency application goes. So sorry if I ramb rambled a little there, but I feel like this is just a really useful resource. A lot of you may already know about it, but I've met a lot of people who haven't found this resource before and it's free, it's easily accessible, so just type it into your search engine and uh, move forward. So I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below and I will leave the link to this website uh, in the description box below for your convenience. Talk to you, talk to you guys later. Bye.